Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a beautiful day inside Marcus Pavilion for the start of the college basketball season for two squads today and four squads in total after our second game today. My name is Sky Gladstone. So excited to bring you today's first contest as well as today's second contest. We'll talk about the second one later. But first, let's preview a little bit of what we're going to see in game one. It is a GNAC California matchup with the MSU Billings Yellow Jackets in game one here representing the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Uh, they are led by Mick Durham, who is in his fifth season as the head coach of the Yellow Jackets. He's a Montana State Bobcat that graduated all the way back in 1980. And uh, their starting lineup today that they're going to roll out is Jawan Tott by Lyle Shabazz, Stephen Richardson, Carrington Wiggins, who's one of the best players in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. And at the post position, we're going to get Emmanuel uh, Ajanaku. Uh, the Nigerian will be the big man for MSU Billings here, at least to start in game one. On the other side, Holy Names University, they got a fresh face at head coach David Koval is going to be the man leading the Hawks out of Oakland, California. And after uh, a campaign last year that didn't necessarily go their way, 7-20 and overall, including a 2-11 and record on true away games and 0-2 in neutral site, they're going to be led by the starting five of Demiri Lindo, Lawrence Smith, Roman Barons, Austin Carter, and the post, the big man, is Travis Patrick, who's going to have his hands full with Ajana Koo. Montana State Billings will be wearing white in this first half. They're going to be going from right to left on your screen. They are the home team on our scoreboard here. And in the red with the black lettering is the Hawks out of Holy Names. Excited to get this Division II basketball season underway. And the tip won by Ajanaku will eventually fall to the hands of Tot. And that is Jawan Tot. We also have Jalen Tot, who's on the roster for MSU Billings. I'll kind of try and keep it standardized by mostly referring to full first and last name for both Jawan and Jalen, but also see a fair amount of just first name for those two. Carrington Wiggins with the ball now. He kicks it out, three-pointer on the way, and it's just going to barely touch the rim. And Holy Names will get their first possession. That was a missed three-pointer by Steven Richardson, who's actually from not too far away uh, from Holy Names. He's out of Sacramento, California, just a couple hours from the Bay Area. Driving inside, putting up that one off glass, and it rolls in for Demiri Lindo. The first points of Holy Names' 2022 campaign belong to Lindo, who plays for his hometown squad. He's from Oakland. MSU Billings working around the outside. Carrington Wiggins slashes to the hole and puts that off glass. A layup from Carrington Wiggins has tied this game at two apiece. Just over a minute gone here. Playing the point guard position for Holy Names. is number 13, Roman Barons, and that's who has it now. Throws it down inside, the double on the low block. Now kicked out, a pump fake before a drive. Lots of contact, but getting the roll is Lawrence Smith. He puts it in, and it's Holy Names back in front. Obviously the beginning of the season, but looking based off last year and based off preseason polls, you can expect that Holy Names is the underdog in this game as that one just touches the front of the rim. Uh, the three-pointer attempted by Bilal Shabazz. This one tried to kick it out cross court, but instead it's intercepted by Steven Richardson going the other way. The alley-oop and the slam from Bilal Shabazz. He got the assist from Carrington Wiggins there. Nice play by the Yellow Jackets. Tied this game at four apiece with 17.40 to go in the first half. Holy Names, very patient on offense thus far. Kicked out for three, and that one goes off back iron 
and away for number 24, Travis Patrick. Now coming the other way, Wiggins with it. Wiggins, a little spin, dish, and eventually the Yellow Jackets will hold up and pass it around the perimeter. Ajanaku came out to the perimeter, but now he's back low. A three-pointer attempted and in from Jawan Top. First three-pointer of this 2022-23 season for the Yellow Jackets. Three-pointers are going to be a big point of conversation in game two of this doubleheader as we get an interception from Tot. Flips it. And a nice finish from Steven Richardson. Might have taken some contact on the head there. No call. But it's just going to be a layup for him. Nine to four now as the Yellow Jackets expand their lead to five. Ooh, there, was a, there was a tug there. It looked like Carrington Wiggins might have caught some of the jersey of number two, Lawrence Smith, as he was coming out trying to get around that screen. But it was a covert tug, no call. We still have yet to see a foul. As the team's playing clean here in the early going. And honestly, offensively, defensively, pretty clean in general, which is... Not too reminiscent of early season ball. There's a nice throw into the low block. And, of course, a little bit of an announcer's jinx there as Bailal Shabazz gets fouled to start the foul calls in this ball game. That foul is called at number 24, Travis Patrick, his first, and it's going to be the team first foul. One shot for Shabazz to try and convert the and one. We get a couple substitutions here. First free throw misses and a good rebound eventually corralled and tapped out uh, to one of his wings by the big man Travis Patrick there who picked up that foul. Patrick with it. Hands off to the point Barons. Tries to do a pick and roll. Misguided pass that still gets to Holy Names and banks it in. 4-3. That was Ayo Adaraboye with the three-pointer. Great job by him. He got a little bit of contest from behind. This one's a long two, and it's in from Carrington Wiggins. Nice step back from Wiggins. Wiggins already has a couple buckets. Got four points. He's two for two from the field. Nice shot attempt. Pretty uncontested there from Adaraboye. Adaraboye. Coming the other way, another wide open attempt that way. Goes off the top of the backboard, still live, and a smart play from number four by Lal Shabazz. Uh, to corral that rebound and bounce it off a of holy name Hawk to keep the ball in favor of the Yellow Jackets. We're going to take a quick break. It's the first media timeout, 13 to 7, just over five gone here in the first half between Holy Names and MSU Billings. Back here, it is 13-7 in the early goal between the Yellow Jackets and the Hawks. 
Opening game of the season for both squads. 7-20 and 20 last year, Holy Names. 13-15 and 15 for Montana State University Billings. They went 9-8 and eight in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, picked third in the preseason polls. The team that was fi- picked first in the preseason polls we'll see in game two as well as the defending number one seed in the West region and the number 13 ranked team in the country, Cal State San Marcos. Three-pointer attempted and through. That is the other Tot brother, Jalen Tot, that knocks that one through. Both Tots come from Dawson Community College, went to John Paul II High School, which is down in Dallas, Texas, long way from home, all the way up in the Big Sky State. Great defense there to get in the grill of the shooting hawk and a missed shot coming the other way. Tot bringing it down. He throws it down to the low block. Ajanaku throws it away, and that ball eventually will end up in the garbage can. There's the wrong bucket to put it into. A little bit of a full court press here as Carrington Wiggins is going to get right in the face of Jake Smith, who will be the point guard upon the departure from the court by Roman Barons. Backup post player in now as you. And we're going to see a foul called on MSU Bede. And Carrington Wiggins picks that one up. It's first foul called on the yellow or on the Hawks this year. Gonna have to, and we're gonna get a travel call. Gonna have to double check now the Holy Names roster online because right now the roster that I got does not have number 35 on it. The roster online does not have uh, 35 on it either. I believe that is Cray Kinsey that is wearing it. Is wearing number 35. They both got long hair. They look fairly similar according to the picture on the website. Just gonna make sure our PA announcer knows that for future <laughs> reference. Ball's coming in. 16 to 7 right now, MSUB. Set up and run the play from the top. Three point coming, took some contact, and the foul will be called on Carter Ploche. Got contact on number three, Abdul Ba, on the three-pointer. It's going to be three shots coming up for Ba. Ball's coming in now, 18 to seven in the early going. Just under seven minutes played. Nice look in there again, I believe wearing number 35 there is Craig Kinsey. The kick out for three off the front iron. Good rebound from Wiggins, waiting under the basket for a short shot. Carrington Wiggins just with a crossover to get the Holy Names defender out of his shoes. Got into the key before getting fouled. Now the fourth foul on the Hawks. And after a start, which didn't involve much contact, foul trouble, at least in terms of getting closer to starting to put Billings in one and one territory, that's getting a little bit closer. A couple more subs as Crincy steps out. At 4 p.m. Pacific time, we will see as we get a nice bucket there just off the inbounds. Good shot from Ba to knock it down. Makes it 20 to 7 as the Hawks offense has dried up and the offense for MSU has been consistently in action. 20 to 7. 
There's a foul. That one's called on number two, Jalen Tott. Going to be his first foul. And just a second on MSU Billings. Seven in for the first time is Malik Briquet. Malik Briquet out of Florida, even further away from home than the top brothers are. There's going to be an offensive foul. As I believe that was called on number 25, Io Adaroboye. Throwing comes to Jalen Tott. He'll work the offense for MSUB. There's Briquet that travels. Going the other way, bringing it up is Jake Smith. Smith out of Richmond, California. A lot of West Coast guys on this squad, and specifically California guys. Really only a handful of guys that aren't from California. That's a nice play, gets it under the basket, and Dale Curry puts it in. First basket to break up a long streak of not scoring for Holy Names. 20 to nine, still fairly close. I think our first look at Jimmy Brown, who's in now playing the backup post. Nice floater. It will not fall. Briquette with the rebound. Briquette misses. And eventually it is grabbed by a Holy Names Hawk. That's Lindo bringing it down. Lindo pushing the fast break. And he crosses over a little bit too much and loses the ball. Coming the other way. A couple crossovers, but smartly pulls up and out of it. Steven Richardson knocks it down. And makes it 22-9. Billings. Picks up his dribble there. But then a quick throw down to the post and gets it back. And that throw goes out of bounds as on different pages are Dale Curry and Jake Smith. 11-13 here to go in the first half. 22-9 Billings leads. We'll take another break. And don't go anywhere here in game one of the SMU Conference Challenge. Welcome back. Yellow Jackets are going to put it in to get us underway. Apologize with our scoreboard. Having technical difficulties with the clock. So I'll just make sure to keep you updated. We got just on 11 minutes left in this first half right now. Throw down to the low block. Briquet losing it, getting it back, kicking it out. They'll reset. Eight on the shot clock, seven on the shot clock. Now it's down to under five. The kick out, top. Buys some space, gets it up front, iron, offensive rebound. Going to be a reset to 20 on the shot clock, then a kick out there. That one's missed. Tot gets the rebound. Tot puts it up and in. Two different offensive rebounds and a long possession that probably lasted a total of 40 seconds. Ends up with a hard-earned two points for the Yellow Jackets. They're up 24-9 to now with 10-24 left to go in the first half. All the way to the lane, nice slash from Travis Patrick, the 6'8 senior from Woodlands Hills, California, goes all the way. 
And as soon as you get that close to the bucket when you're 6'8", it's pretty easy to make it go down. That one is lost on the inside from Jimmy Brown. Contact there coming up, but nothing called, and Holy Names will slow it down a little bit. Now a shot from the free throw line. That one's put in by Austin Carter. And out of that timeout, we're seeing a little bit of a pick-me-up from both sides as we're under 10 minutes in the first half, 24 to 13 in favor of the MSU Billings Yellow Jackets. Taught with it around the perimeter. He creates some space. It's going to be an offensive foul. A little bit of a stiff arm push off there from Jalen Tott. And that's the second foul for Jalen Tott. Leading scorers right now. It is a very split box score for Holy Names as Lindo, Smith, Carter, Patrick, and Curry all have two points. And. Adara Boye has three. On the other side, it's Jalen Tott leading the way with five points for MSU Billings. Right behind him are a handful of Yellow Jackets with four. This one's worked down to the low block. Kind of an awkward hook shot put up by number two, Lawrence Smith, and it doesn't fall for him, rebounded by the Yellow Jackets. 24 to 13, nine minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Yellow Jackets with the ball again, they're wearing white and wearing red is Holy Names. That one doesn't go. And I think we might have just an out of bounds call there. Thought for a second, could be a foul. Just out of bounds off the Yellow Jackets, coming down the other way will be the Holy Names Hawks. And they're now into a full court, they're kind of three-quarter court, one, two, two press, and it works perfectly. Get a deflection, get a steal from Emmanuel uh, Ajanaku, and MSU has one back possession before Holy Names could even cross half court. This is Jawan Tot that puts it in. Quick. Break down the other way, and a nice finish from Demiri Lindo, who finishes off the alley-oop. 26 to 15 here, 8.24 to go in the first half. MSU Billings ahead by 11. Nearly walking there was Steven Richardson. Ajanaku gets it, then the handoff. Wiggins, Wiggins a floater off the front iron. He gets his own miss. Looks for Ajanaku, but it's taken away. Lindo now has it, and he'll slow up the offense. In the middle, it seemed like Craig Crincy had a, some space, and now here he, is, he is, here he is on the perimeter. Working on the low block. Looking for space, nearly thrown away, but a good recovery by Barons to grab that one. Now seven on the shot clock. They need to get a shot up here. The throw to Kinsey, and that one's blocked, and it will be... Uh, a block and a rebound rather than a shot clock violation, but it was kind of pick your poison at the end of the shot clock there as it was stick em defense from MSU Billings. They could get nothing from it. And with 7.28 to go in the first half and a 26 to 15 lead for the Yellow Jackets, we're going to get another media timeout, so don't go anywhere. It's an 11 point lead for MSUB. Back here, we are in Marcus Pavilion, which is in Lacey, Washington, a part of the greater 
Lacey, uh, Tumwater, and Olympia area. Olympia, of course, for the Californians and the Montanans listening, is the state capital of the Evergreen State. We're going to get two shots from Carrington Wiggins here to bring us back underway. Off the back iron and out on shot number one. Right now, free throws, only names, or excuse me, Billings is two for four on free throws. Actually, scratch that, they're three for six now. They were two for four before Carrington Wiggins stepped up, so they're shooting 50% from the line. On the other side, Holy Names has not attempted a free throw yet. Kicked out a long two inbound, gonna be missed. And a good rebound there from Bilal Shabazz. Taught with it, Jawan taught that was. Worked around the perimeter, Carrington Wiggins. Now a kick out, this is Richardson. Richardson kicks out, find Wiggins. Wiggins to Tot, Tot looking for space. And then a long shot from the post player, Ajanaku, and he misses it. Brought down by Kinsey. Nearly a push off there. We saw the same call on the other side just a couple minutes ago, but not enough for the refs to pull the trigger on it. Throw down to the low block, double coming, but before the double came, it was put up and in by Travis Patrick. Travis Patrick played in 26 out of the 27 games last year for Holy Names. Did not start one, though, as that one was a bounce pass that was the right idea on a pick and roll, but just the wrong spot. The 6'11", Ajanaku. Can't go all the way down to get that one that was at his shins. 27 to 17, six minutes left in the first half here at Marcus Pavilion. Still lots of basketball to go, and we'll see plenty of basketball tomorrow. Don't worry about that one. There's a John Aku getting called for the foul. It's a John Aku's first foul of the game. Fourth foul for the team. Neither team in the bonus yet. There's a throw down to the low block, double coming, and gets out of it, nearly slams it down from number 24, Travis Patrick, created the space for himself. And just lost it, but a good job for himself to get back in the play and put Tot under pressure. Kicked out to Tot, now all the way around. The shot from Shabazz rims out, rebound, Ajanaku. And that's a foul called on Ajanaku there. I didn't see much contact. Looked like a strong rebound from my perspective. And I'm sure Ajanaku would agree, as well as his head coach, Mick Durham. But nevertheless, it does not go his way. And it will be now five fouls apiece as Ajanaku picks up two quick ones. Him in foul trouble is not what you want for MSUB as they're going to rely on him in the post throughout this season. And foul trouble will be a big, that's a travel. Foul trouble will be a big question mark for him based on how much does, will we see him? And of course, McDermott does the smart thing, takes him out of the game right after picking up those two quick fouls. Five minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. 27 to 17 is our score. Billings ahead of the... Holy Names Hawks. Throw down into Shabazz. Shabazz covered by Kinsey. Kinsey straight up, good defense, but a better hook shot move from Shabazz. He puts it in 29-17 with 4.50 to go. First half here. Holy Names with the ball. Trying to find some space, some contact there. Not enough to get any calls. We're seeing constantly good defense from the Yellow Jackets. Forced a bad shot there and a foul called. Who will it be on? Because it was off the ball. So Steven Richardson of the Yellow Jackets was called for a foul there. It was away from the ball, something with uh, an illegal box out. 
It's going to be his first foul, and it's going to earn Holy Names back a possession after a really strong defensive shift from the Yellow Jackets. 20 on the shot clock. We'll see if they can do it again. I think that was the sixth team foul. Yeah, the fouls are six to six. But our scoreboard in the Jumbotron here, I think it's set up for a women's game, so it's five to five right now. But now both teams are in the bonus, just so you know. Shot clock running down, floated up, it hits the rim. The rebound will go to the Yellow Jackets. Good fight from Austin Carter, a senior from La Habra, California. But it ends up going off him and rolling out for a Yellow Jackets ball. 29 to 17, four minutes to go in the first half. Yellow Jackets have possession up the court, trying to expand their lead beyond 12. Carrington Wiggins takes a dribble, shoots the three, count it, and one. A chance for a four-point play from Carrington Wiggins. Foul is called on Lawrence Smith. And right there, you see what makes Carrington Wiggins so good. He started and played in all 28 games last year for the Yellow Jackets as we have a timeout. He shot 48% from the field, tied for the lead in three-pointers for the Yellow Jackets with a 33.5% mark from behind the line. He shot 79% from the free throw line. Also a pretty good rebounder with four rebounds a game, 63 total assists. He averaged 17 point two points per game for the Yellow Jackets last year. The Yellow Jackets, I mentioned, they went nine and eight in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, a 13 and 15 campaign overall. They beat Holy Names by six when they were playing down at Cal State San Marcos in the California version uh, of this matchup. Of course, now the Great Northwest side is hosting this second leg, the second year of it. They did lose to Cal State San Marcos down there, as did St. Martin's. So both teams will get a chance this weekend for a revenge match against the Cougars. It was a 69 to 50, not 55 score line between MSUB and Cal State San Marcos. We'll see that tomorrow. That is a bright and early game, 10 a.m. Uh, from right here at Marcus Pavilion. The End result for MSUB last year was a loss in the conference tournament to Central Washington, a seven-point loss right here at Marcus Pavilion. So a full circle moment for them losing on this floor a few months ago and now starting their season back here in Lacey, Washington. Wiggins converts to four-point play. 33-17 to 17 is our scoreline here. 3.50 to go in the first half as Billings looks to go into the locker room with an ample cushion. Kinsey with a pull-up shot there. Missed it, but a long rebound ends up going to Lawrence Smith. Lawrence Smith now trapped in the corners. Eventually gets it out, and the foul will be on Austin Carter, who is going up. That was an impressive magician's axe from Lawrence Smith. It looked like he was dead in the water right in front of the MSUB bench. Somehow got it off to one of his posts, Austin Carter, who ends up earning his way to the line to shoot two. First free throw up and good. Carter last season, second on the team with 9.6 points per game. The leader was Edward Gray, also goes by Trey Gray, who's on the roster, but I haven't seen him today, so I'm expecting that he is injured. Carter's second shot is up and good, so he makes both of his free throws. Carter last year, free throws were a struggle for him. 56% shooting from the line for the post. MSUB with it now, the throw inside. That throw kind of had to loop it weird, but it ended up getting to an MSUB player. Carrington Wiggins, another step back, Jay. This one 
does not fall. And now it's going to be an odd man rush down the court. Hands to Kinsey. That's a charge. Kinsey's going to be called for the offensive foul and a smart play by Emmanuel Akpon, who set up right in front of the arc there and then took the big hit from Kinsey, the 6'9 junior. Sure, it didn't feel great, but got a lot of adrenaline flowing through you when you take a big charge like that to earn the possession back. Three minutes left in this first half. 33 to 19, Yellow Jackets in front of the Hawks. Passed around the perimeter. Four out, one in offense right now for the Yellow Jackets. Now it's five out. Before returning back to the middle is Jimmy Brown. Five on the shot clock, four. Wiggins steps back. Doesn't fall, but he does get the rim and an offensive rebound. New possession, Tot now for three. Tot misses it. Nearly another offensive rebound, but eventually Demari, Demari Lindo pulls it down. 33-19, 2.20 to go in the first half. I think there was a block there on that shot attempt from Austin Carter, or else it just came off really funky. This one's thrown down the court. And Jimmy Brown, I don't think he was expecting it, and if he was, he needed it to be pretty, pretty much right on his body because that one was behind him. He was moving forward. No chance for him to reach back and get it, so that one's going to be a turnover on the MSUB Yellow Jackets. Already mentioned it, but MSUB picked third in the preseason polls in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Going to be a competitive top of the division. There are votes all over. St. Martin's picked at the top, but I think that was just kind of default. They won last year, and there's no clear number one this year. So let's give it to the Saints to see if they can find a way to repeat as regular season champions. 152 to go here in the first half. 33 to 19 is our score line. Three point on the way and missed it. Wiggins with acres of space around him grabs down the rebound. Wiggins to the hoop, fouled, missed the layup. That was a nice stunt of a screen from Jimmy Brown who was set up if Carrington Wiggins opted to go to his right instead. Wiggins, a little shimmy and shake to his left, got all the way to the hoop. And the smart play there is to send him to the free throw line to see if he can earn his two points. Wiggins, last season, mentioned already, 79% shooter from the charity stripe. 141 to go in this first half. First shot up and good from Carrington Wiggins. Wiggins, originally from Flint, Michigan, a JUCO transfer from Mott Community College, which is in the state of Michigan. And he makes both free throws. 35 to 19 is our score with 1.41 to go in this first half. Full court press. It's another 1 2 2 kind of three quarter full court look. They break the press kind of before losing it. Now a good pass around, and eventually it falls uh, to Austin Carter, who missed the layup on an offensive board. Now it's Patrick in. Patrick eventually gets the roll. That one goes in. 35-21 is our score here with 1.15 to go. Kick out. Three-pointer. Bang. In the hoop for Steven Richardson. So right after a big back at one game, actually that was a two. So it's 37-21 rather than 38-21. But still, great fast break, great kick out, and a good shot from Richardson to finish off the fast break. It's 37-21 as we're under a minute now. 50 seconds to go in this first half. Looks like Holy Names might be timing it out to go two for one here. Long three attempted, no shot, and we got tangled up arms. Eventually the offensive rebound and the missed layup from Austin Carter who tried to put that one off glass. Now with 27 on the shot clock. Now there's right now there's 20 on the shot clock and 24 on the game clock. So a four second difference and we're gonna get a timeout from MSU Billings who is gonna draw up what they want, what they want to do with their last 20 seconds. Likely save for one shot and only just have a little bit of change. So 
while we wait for that final play call from MSUB, we're going to take a quick break. 24 seconds to go in the first half, 37 to 21, MSU Billings in front. Back here, 24 seconds left in this first half, 20 on the shot clock. As Billings gets it underway, they'll likely run it down to just a little under 10 and start their final action on offense. Tot with it outside, Jawan Tot that is. The throw inside, good defense, poked away. Now four on the shot clock, they need to get something up. They will heave it and it will hit the front iron. Now a timeout by Holy Names with 1.5 left. It's going to need to be some sort of full court heave and then a quick spin and shoot where the clock will be reset from 1.5 to 2.6. First half, 2.6 on the clock. It's a 30 second timeout, so just a quick draw up by Dave Koval. First year head coach for Holy Names. He inherits a lot of players on this squad. I already mentioned Edward Gray, their top scorer last year. He returns. Austin Carter is a returner. So is Demiri Lindo, Roman Barons, Travis Patrick, uh, Lawrence Smith. They, they got a lot of guys from last year, but of course they did struggle last year. So it's trying to take what you inherit. As it will be a Half court attempt, the full court, or the half court heave, can't bank it in off glass from Travis Patrick, who utilized all the 2.6 seconds he had on the clock and nearly found a way to put a three pointer in from about five feet behind the actual three point line. We got a 15 minute halftime break here, 37 to 21 at the break. We're going to come back with some stats and analysis of the first half in probably about 12, 13 minutes. So we'll talk a little bit about that and get the second half underway. And of course, don't miss the second half of our double hitter, Cal State San Marcos and St. Martin's. That'll be starting at about 4 p.m. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes.
Welcome back, fans. About a minute to go before we get the second half underway. Let me talk you through a little bit of the first half stats. Uh, leading the charge for MSU Billings was Carrington Wiggins, as expected. He had 11 points in his 17 minutes of action to go along with three rebounds. On the other side, leading the way for Holy Names, much more of a diverse attack. It's Patrick with six. Carter and Lindo each add four for the Holy Names. Hawks, of course, only 21 points on the scoreboard. They are needing to figure a little, a little bit more out offensively. Obviously, a big part of that is having... Trey Gray out today, their leading scorer from last year who had 18.3 points per game. They have nobody that scored over 10 points per game last year uh, for their squad other than Gray. So missing that against a MSUB team with high expectations is clearly miss from the field. MSUB is shooting 48%, 23% from three-point line. They got three three-pointers. On the other side, behind the arc, action is killing uh, Holy Names right now. They're one for seven for 14%. They also haven't taken much trips to the charity stripe. Two for two in the two free throws that Carter hucked up there. On the other side, nine free throws for MSUB, and they've made six of those. Foul trouble, not much to pay attention to in this first half. Uh, the only players with multiple fouls are Ajanaku as well as Jalen Tot. Not to be confused with Jawan Todd, who has no fouls, but Ajanaku and Jalen Tott have two fouls each for MSUB. And on the other side, it's Lindo and number 23, Ploche, with two fouls for Holy Names. They start with the ball here, just underway in the second half, a 16-point edge for MSUB after one period down. No contact called, no foul called there as Roman Barron strove the lane. Spent a good couple seconds with his palms up asking for a potential foul or at least out on MSUB, got none of it and a turnover to start the half for the Holy Names Hawks, and you're seeing some really good defense from MSUB in that first half. That's a reason behind the near impeccable mark of just 21 points put up by Holy Names. Ajanaku takes a foul. Don't know if it's going to be on. It's on Austin Carter rather than Travis Patrick. Austin Carter. That is his first personal foul. Ajanaku. First free throw up and through. That's his first free throw of the season. Thirty-eight twenty-one. Quick covers, quick check with one ref to another about the scoreboard. That one will rim out for Ajanaku. Ajanaku last season, 49% from the charity stripe. A very not good mark as that shot is missed by number 21, Austin Carter. Rebound goes to Richardson, who ends up taking some contact, putting it off glass. No foul called, but a good finish from Steven Richardson, the Midland College Juco transfer. Now coming the other way, there's some contact there. A hack is called. Travis Patrick absorbs the contact. The foul will be called on Ajanaku. Of course, started this half talking about there's not much foul trouble, and Ajanaku picks up his third with that one. And maybe more concerning in the long run is the fact that uh, he's holding his elbow right now and coming out. Yeah. 
18 and 48 left to go here in the second half. Just underway, 40 to 21. Second, pat, second free throw is up and good from Travis Patrick. And the lead is 18 right now for MSUB as they bring the ball up the court. In the second half, MSUB wearing the white with blue numbers and letters on their jerseys, yellow trim. As that's going to be an offensive foul by Lal Shabazz called for kind of throwing an elbow there when he was creating space for himself. It was a subtle, subtle call. I did not think the ref was going to see it, but the ref right in front of me in perfect position to make that call just a little bit too strong of an elbow. And it will go down as an offensive foul and a turnover for Shabazz. Barons brings it up. And he throws it down to the low block, then gets it back. Barron's in the corner, trying to create some space. Carrington Wiggins on him like glue, though. Now a double on the low block. Throw across court. Long three from the lefty back there. And right in front of his bench. That is a great shot from number two, Lawrence Smith. Three-pointer, that one. Ooh, a late foul call there on number one, Jawan Tot. For Lawrence Smith, who made that three-pointer, that's his first three-pointer made. The other one made by Holy Names was from Adaraboye. Adaraboye, excuse me. Forty-one to twenty-five, sixteen-point lead, and the second free throw from Tot rims out. Lead stays at sixteen for MSU Billings as Holy Names brings it up. A little bit of hesitation, drive, no foul called. Carrington Wiggins, good play to get in the air, throw, throw that one back in. And a foul will end up slowing action down. Seventeen and a half to go here in the second half. Still in the early going. Holy names though with a 16 point deficit gonna need to start scoring a little bit quicker. And put a little bit more of the breaks on the MSU Billings offense. Throw into Shabazz. Shabazz, much better move there. Did not throw the elbow like he did just a second ago when he got called for that offensive foul and immediately they're into kind of a soft press as Top will shadow Barons down the court. Barons gets all the way to the block before getting the ball taken away and then that one goes in for Steven Richardson. Comes back and now a 20 point lead. Timeout, Holy Names. A three pointer from Lauren Smith. Looked like it might have something brewing for Holy Names but next thing you know in a flash this MSU billing squad is able to answer with a few buckets. The lead is 20 for the Yellow Jackets with 16.57 to go in the second half. We'll take a quick break for this timeout. Don't go anywhere, 45 to 25 MSUB. back here and immediately a full court press put on 
from MSUB, but they soften it up as soon as the inbound happens. Holy names with the ball here. Spin move, good adjustment there from getting the ball partially knocked out of his hand. That's Travis Patrick with a good play to finish and put it off glass 45 to 27, 16 and a half to go in the second half. Carrington Wiggins with it. Wiggins dribbles it off his own leg but recovers. Shabazz with it. Shabazz to Jimmy Brown. Brown back to Shabazz. Shabazz creating some space on the inside. That one's going to be blocked by Patrick. Coming the other way now for Holy Names. First time I believe we're seeing Jay Gill in there for Holy Names. Don't remember seeing zero in the first half. See what he can bring to the perimeter. Kicked out for three. Gill nearly sparked something, but a botched rebound by Shabazz, and it's staying with the Holy Names Hawks. Now we're going to have a media timeout, so not much action happening in between timeouts. We're going to take another quick break. 15.51 to go in the second half, 45-27, to 27, MSUB in front. Welcome back to Lacey, Washington. 45 to 27 is our score. 15-51 left to go in the second half. My name is Scott Gladstone. So excited to have you along for today's game, as well as game number two of this doubleheader. If you stick around for Cal State San Marcos versus St. Martins, a game of much interest to probably the parties watching this game as well. Ball with Holy Names right now. The kick out, pump fake before driving inside, and eventually the long limbs of Shabazz scrape the ball away from Holy Names. This one's driven in and thrown the other way. Carrington Wiggins, though, eventually grabs it. He's going to pull it out and set up the offense. Senior out of Flint, Michigan, is Carrington Wiggins. Being guarded right now by Lawrence Smith. He gives it up. Now down on the low block, the kick out around. Shabazz, pump fake, comes inside. Five on the shot clock. Richardson to the rack. Richardson puts it in. Tell you what, Carrington Wiggins gets the headlines for this MSUB squad, but I really like what I'm seeing from Richardson today. He is a very versatile player that has been all over the court offensively and defensively for MSUB. This one's blocked by Shabazz. Good play by him. Another block by Shabazz. Two in one possession and then poked away. I believe that was Tot that got the final poke. He'll probably get the steal to his name. Carrington Wiggins tried to put what almost would feel like a nail in a coffin at this point, but it does not go for him. A little bit long on the shot. Now the other way. That three by Lindo doesn't go. 14-20 to go in this second half. Nice play there to keep that one in play. Coming the other way, Lindo to the rack. Great play from Lindo to finish that one off. After the hustle play, earn that possession down at the other end. Full extension to keep it in bounds. 47 to 29, 14 minutes to go in the second half. Three-pointer attempted, does not go. And we're going to get some contact, I believe, called on Jimmy Brown. Any good ref will tell you there's no such thing as over the back, but that is essentially what that was. It's a push from behind. Uh, and Brown. And 
And now bringing it up, the court is Jay Gill for Holy Names. Lindo brings it inside, tries to float it, just comes off the front of the rim. And now, I don't know if that was called a carry or out of bounds, but when Jalen Tott got that ball, he kind of cocked it back like he was about to throw a Hail Mary down the court and then turned it into a dribble. And whether it was out of bounds or a carry, it was not legal, and it's a turnover on him. Stays with the Hawks. 13 and a half minutes to go. Three-pointer attempted off the back iron. Good rebound from number 21, Austin Carter. Now kicked out. Lindo, he's short. But another rebound from Holy Names. We've seen some of the grit of this Hawks team here in game one. Shots not necessarily falling for him against a good MSUV defense, but they're still right in it. Another three coming. This one falls. And Dale Curry after he was a part of earning some of the extra possessions on that long stint from the Hawks. He is the one that cashes in with the three-pointer. Now coming the other way, offensive foul called on Jalen Tott. He passed it up, but right after he gave it up, he did run over the Hawk in front of him. And another turnover here, and maybe we're seeing something brewing for Holy Names. They got a lot of ground to make up after the way they ended that first half and the way they started this half, but it's 47 to 32 in favor of MSUB. And after a missed shot and an offensive rebound put up and in Austin Carter, the and one. Another chance for a three point play from Holy Names could cut the lead down to 12. There is 12.37 to go. As we, see, as we see Austin Carter step up. Carter, as of right now, six points for him. Could be seven, and it is. As that one goes through, Carter three for three from the line today. You love a post that can shoot his free throws. Foul was on Brickell, his first. 12 and a half to go in the second half of play here. 47 to 35, MSUB in front of Holy Names. Raquel with it, but he kicks it back out to Tot. Now it's Richardson. Tot for three. Rims out. Decent look at basket. Just didn't go for Tot. Now coming the other way. It's Lindo creating some space. Kicking out for three. Bang. It's in the bottom of the net. And a big three-pointer for number 23, Carter Ploche. The lead is cut to single digits for MSUB with 12 minutes to go here in the second half. 47 to 38, good spark from Holy Names. What will we see in the final 12 minutes of action? Well, don't go anywhere. It is 47 to 38 as we take a quick break. Throwing coming from MSUB, and it was knocked out right away. They took the time out there, McDermott did. Try and slow down the run 
that we've seen holy names on just in the past minute or so. Sparking that offense, hitting some big shots, an and one, a three-pointer. Next thing you know, it's a single-digit lead for MSUB. And we're going to see a foul, and I believe it will be called on Austin Carter. Inbound coming for MSUB. Tot will inbound. It's Jalen Tot rather than Jawan. Missed shot. Nobody there as Abdul Ba didn't follow his shot right away, but eventually a hot gets to it. 47 38. This is Carter with it. And the shot is short from Dale Curry. Now coming the other way, MSUB, they need a bucket soon. Just kind of get their shooting confidence back up as things have not fallen for them since the 15 minute mark. 11-11 to go here on 11-11. And right there, that's a high percentage shot from Ba as he slices his way to the rack and puts it off glass and in. 49-38, 11 minutes to go now here at Marcus Pavilion in game one of the NCAA season for both of these squads. Kicked out. Good job to create some space. Kick out to the other side. Curry for three. No. Good rebound from Shabazz. Tot brings it up now. Jalen Tot. Shabazz now the other way. This is Ba. Back on the floor now with three fouls is Ajanaku. Eventually comes to Wiggins. Wide open for three. And right down the pipe. 52 to 38 is now the lead for MSUB as they respond to the Holy Names run with a run of their own. 10 minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the second half. Cross-court pass for three. That one's through. Carter Ploche, another three from the Carlsbad, California native. 52 to 41, 10 minutes on the dot left in the second half. Wiggins. Had a chance to kind of go ISO there and try and take Curry to the rack. He opted out of it, passed it away. Now it's Ba. Ba will go to the rack. Little bit of contact, nothing call, but there is a foul call. Don't know if it's on Carter, who it's called on. It'll be on number 23, Carter Ploche. Going to the free throw line will be Emmanuel Janaku. Janaku, originally from Lagos in Nigeria. Transfer from Gillette College. Okay, it was not on Ploche. It was on 21, Austin Carter. That would have been Ploche's fourth as Janaku makes the first free throw. It's changed to Austin Carter, so his third. An update on foul trouble with 950, or 949 here to go in the second half. Jonaku has three. He's on the floor right now. Jalen Tott has three. I believe he is still on the floor. Yes, he is. And on the other side, it's Carter with three as well as Ploche for three as Jonaku misses that free throw. 53 to 41. MSU will be in front. 940 to go in the second half. Wiggins, so good with his defense, gives himself a little bit of claps, and now Ajanaku is going to pick up a foul. That is not the foul you want to pick up in this situation when you got three on you, and immediately McDurham points to Jimmy Brown on the bench to come in for Ajanaku, a quick shift, a productive one, but just not long enough as he just hedged a little bit too hard there, essentially, and got called or a blocking foul. He has four, something to keep an eye on. As MSUB has six total, next foul will be one and one. That one deflected by Holy Names. A little bit of an errant pass goes out of bounds. 9.27 here to go in the second half. Holy Names is shifting into somewhat of a full court, a soft full court press as now it's backed off and Shabazz will just create some room for top. Carrington Wiggins now. 
Tott eventually collects the pass from Wiggins. This one knocked away, perfect from Lindo. A two on one, dishes away, and then a block from Shabazz eventually goes off Holy Names. And that was Trey Gray. That's on the floor now. Who I assumed was not playing today due to injury just because we didn't see him in the first half. But it, if it is the same Edward Gray that led, led the charge for Holy Names last year, he averaged 18 points a game, over 18 points per game. So if, it, if that is the same guy, um, he's on the floor now and ready to cause some havoc. To the rack, missed it. Offensive rebound, he misses that, but a foul will be called. Jimmy Brown absorbs the contact. He's going to get a crack at the line. The foul is on Travis Patrick. Another Hawk moves into warning territory in terms of foul trouble, as that's his third foul. Something to keep an eye on. Both teams are now in the bonus going forward, so it will be one and one on either foul. Two shots coming for number 45, Jimmy Brown. First shot rims out. Brown was part of this team last year after transferring in from uh, Chandler Gilbert Community College. Misses both free throws. Brown only shot 14 free throws last year and was 64% from the line. This one is Lindo to the bucket. Lindo gets some contact and a foul. Called against Brown, I believe. No, it's going to be Shabazz. No, it is Jimmy Brown. That's Brown's second foul. And Demary Lindo. Step up. Lindo, sophomore from Oakland, California. His high school ball at St. Mary's College High School. Love it when schools don't do that, don't, don't you? You say college in your high school's name. It's a little bit confusing. Especially in the Bay Area, they also have St. Mary's College. The Gales, who play Division I basketball on the West Coast Conference. Arch rivals of Gonzaga, who opens their NCAA official season today with the Armed Forces Classic on the USS Abraham Lincoln against Michigan State. That'll be something that will go on parallel to the season opener we have for St. Martin's coming up soon. Don't ask how I, I got there with what I was talking about. Eventually a foul will be called on Holy Names and we're going to get a one and one. 53 to 42 is our score. Eight minutes and 12 seconds to go as we got free throws coming for the Yellow Jackets. The foul is on Demiri Lindo. One and one is missed on the front end. And it will be coming the other way now. Lindo with it. Lindo will slice in, then a kick out. Jake Smith. Smith, he finds Lindo. Lindo falls down but keeps the dribble going. Impressive to not turn that into a turnover immediately. Smith with it. Smith looking for space. Now it's Patrick that ends up finishing it with four on the shot clock. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go in the second half. 53 to 44, single digit lead for MSUB. They've been comfortably in front for most of this contest. Carrington Wiggins fires a three, missed, rebound Patrick. Lindo will bring it up, he'll kick it to Smith. Smith will set up the offense before getting it to Patrick up top. Patrick for three, Patrick puts it down. Lead down to six for MSUB. Seven minutes and 15 seconds to go. When you're the favorite, the last thing you want to do is let the underdog start to believe and that's exactly what might be happening here at Marcus Pavilion. Holy Names has gone on a run since the 15-minute mark in this second half. And with 7.03 to go, a timeout taken by MSU Billings to reconvene and 
and try and figure out how to hold on to win this game. 53 to 47, 703 left in the half. Don't go anywhere. Gonna be an exciting finish at Marcus Pavilion. MSU Billings is going to put the ball in play. It'll be Jimmy Brown that receives the inbound, but quickly gives it up to Tot, his point guard. Jawan Tot hands off to Richardson. Back to Tot now, looking in the low block. Shabazz, guarded by Patrick, tries to pull a post move. Right-handed hook shot and in. Patrick couldn't have played much better defense than that. But Shabazz, if he gets it on that lower block there where he can opt for a right-handed hook shot, it is a hard one to stop. Now in the underbelly of the basket, a foul called on Jimmy Brown. Similar contact to what we saw on the MSU B side of the court with Shabazz taking some. But I think our ref said that there was a push in the back and it's the third foul on Jimmy Brown. Two shots for Austin Carter. First shot that he missed from the free throw line goes off the front iron. Now three for four from the charity strike. That one goes in. Carter's up to eight points on the day. Patrick leads the scores for Holy Names. He's got 14 on the other side. It's Carrington Wiggins with 14. Richardson with 12 right behind. As this one goes down low to Brown. Brown gets some contact and it rolls in. On and one for MSU Billings and a free throw from Brown could make the lead 10 for MSU B. Foul called on Lindo. That is Lindo's fourth foul. He's got seven points out there, six rebounds. Key player, a starter for this Holy Name squad. And with four fouls. As of right now, Covell is not going to play with fire with 6.20 to go in the second half. Brown will have one free throw to convert the N1. It rolls off. Brown. That three free throws, and they've all been close, but none of them have gone in for the big man out of Arizona. 57-48. Gray, Gray to the hoop. He'll be fouled. Will that be number four on Brown? No, it will not. It will be by Lal Shabazz, his second foul. First free throw is up and in. Six oh four to go here in the second half. The second free throw is also in. Nice, pure shot from Gray there. 57 to 56 minutes on the dot to go. Bringing down the court is Tot. He gets a screen. 
from Ajanaku who is on the floor. There's contact there, and right now we're just seeing a foul on each side of the court. And nobody able to get into a rhythm as the majority of the past five minutes have been spent at the free throw line. 57 to 50, 5.51 to go. Shabazz is going to go to the free throw line. First free throw is missed. Free throws right now, a little bit of a trouble for Montana State Billings. Nine for 20 on the day. That foul was on Ploche, by the way, for Holy Names. He's got four. Foul trouble right now for both sides as Janaku picked up his fourth a while ago and now back in. So one more and he's fouled out of the game. On the other side, Lindo and Ploche both have four themselves. Gill with the ball. Long three attempted and through. Three pointer is good. And we're, we're going to get a flop called. Okay, this is the first instant that we've seen here of this situation. So Gray makes the three-pointer, took some contact. The referee said he went down and called him for a flop. Before this year, if you went down for a flop, the first time your team that happened, it was just a warning. But because of a rule change over this past offseason, it is no longer a warning. It is straight to a Class B technical, which means a free throw, and then essentially whatever whatever was going to happen with the ball happens anyway. Carrington Wiggins misses the free throw. So it ends up not really doing anything, but it is a technical foul, and honestly, it might have done more harm than good for MSUB, who doesn't get any points out of it, and now Holy Name's a little bit fired up. And as our PA announcer Joe down there clarified, no personal foul on Gray for that, no team foul. That's why it's just a Class B. They're just trying to get flopping out of the game and take one more step to do that. However, I'm not going to be the one judge, judge that was necessary much of a flop from Gray. I think he got some contact, went down with it as we get a full court press coming from Holy Names. They're trying to spark some energy into this game. Now they the lead is at four for MSUB, 5.27 to go. Lots of time left in this second half. Tot with it outside. Tot looks inside. Shabazz going to take a double team, go up with it, and he puts it in with his left hand. Great job by Shabazz to adjust to getting two bodies on him. 59 to 53, five minutes left to go in the second half of play. Gill sets up the offense. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Now it's Gray with it. Gray trying to just get some space. He's got Shabazz on him. Gray attacks. Gray off the back iron. Does not fall for the senior. Now coming the other way is MSU Billings. They're in no rush unless they get a wide open bucket. Covering a six point lead. This one's up and in off the off the glass, great job by Tot. Jawan Tot to slice to the rack, take some contact and put it in. Foul is on Ayo Adaraboye. 61 to 53, that was Adaraboye's second foul. Both teams are now in the double bonus, so any fouls means we will get two free throws. We've already seen plenty of free throws in the second half. I don't need any more, but I'm thinking we'll see at least a couple. Tots on stick'em defense as Gill takes it down the court. Now Curry with it. Curry into Carter. Carter at the elbow. Back out, 10 on the shot clock. Into Carter. Carter spins with his left hand, puts it in. 62 to 55, four minutes to go. Actually, funny enough, when I looked at the scoreboard, it was 4.06 to go, which is Montana's area code for those back watching in Billings. Double coming, 
trapped in the corner, kind of lofts it up, but Wiggins eventually gets to it. That was nearly a John Akou's fatal mistake there. Carrington Wiggins with it. Wiggins, eventually the ball will go to Holy Names. A steal coming the other way, thrown up, and it was a lofty attempt at a alley-oop there as not really ready for it was the Holy Names Hawks and a smart play to kind of slow up the offense there instead of taking a low percentage shot. Ajanaku works it around. Richardson with it. Richardson trying to create space. He loses it but gets it back and loses it again. Curry with the takeaway. Curry comes down, a three on two. Curry all the way off glass but an offensive foul. Immediately called an offensive foul by the referee that's right on top of it but he's going to Right away, go to his refereeing counterparts there and try and see if anybody saw back heels in the restricted area. This is the difference right now between an and one and an offensive foul. And again, before a call's made, Holy Names are all going to stand up and applaud. And they are going to change the call, it looks like. And they are saying, count the bucket. And it's a, it's a foul on Carrington Wiggins, who thought he had a charge that would have put MSU Billings really firmly in the driver's seat in this game. Instead, a chance for a three-point play as Curry goes to the line, 62 to 57 with 3.09 to go. Free throws up, it's good. 62 to 58. The entire game. MSU Billings has held, held the lead, but right now that's getting in a little bit of danger as it's nearly a one possession game. Stolen by Curry, Curry's coming the other way. Carrington Wiggins with him, tries to get a foul and he does! He goes into Wiggins, gets the contact, puts it in with his left hand off glass. Wiggins, who really was just trying to run, run neck and neck with him, Picks up his second foul in as many defensive possessions or, and his third total. A second and one from Curry and a timeout. 62 to 60 with a free throw pending for the Holy Names Hawks. Let's give you a little bit of a game reset, figure out what has been going on. The last, or the only, <laughs> the only lead that Holy Names has held was with 17.55 left in the first half. That's very early, just a little over two minutes into the first half. They held a four to two lead. That was their only lead of the ball game. They held it for 53 seconds. And since then they've been tied twice, but they did not take the lead and they were down by as many as 20 points, 47 to 23. They're 47 to 27 at the 1354 mark in this second half. And again, that means 30 over 34 minutes of held lead by the MSU Billings Yellow Jackets. Foul trouble, let's go over that real quick. Uh, Ajanaku, the starting center for the MSU Billings Yellow Jackets, he's got four. And we got three by Wiggins, three by Jalen Tot as well. Those are the only Yellow Jackets in foul trouble. Lindo has four for Holy Names. Floche has four, and with three, it's Carter and Patrick, two key posts for the Yellow Jackets. In terms of the scoring, it has been Patrick leading the way, but Carter and Curry are also in double figures, and Curry right now will step to the line with a chance to put in his 11th point of the game if he can knock down a free throw. On the other side, Carrington Wiggins with 14, Shabazz and Richardson each have 12. Two minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the second half. 62 to 60. And make it 62 to 61. A one point game here as Holy Names is going to up the energy and bring everybody forward after that made free throw. And they're going to try and look for a double, but easily out of it. Passing to Shabazz there is MSU Billings. He brings it up. Carrington Wiggins with it now. One point lead for MSUB. What will they do with this possession with two and a half minutes to go? Richardson creates some space, gets some room. That's a block foul called. As stepping in to try and take that was Jay Gill. Richardson lowered the shoulder a little bit, but they're going to say more of a block than a charge. 
And that's the first foul on Gill. Two shots for Richardson. Free throws have been a nemesis for MSUB today. They've missed 13 and only made 10. Richardson, this is his first shots from the line. Makes it a much needed make there. Richardson did not play for MSUB last season. Played his Juco ball at Midland College. And the Sacramento native makes both of his free throws, makes it a three point game. Gill will get the inbound and he'll take it up. No, he won't, he'll pass it to Curry. Curry will take it up, guarded by Wiggins. 2.25 to go here. In this second half, it is a one possession game, 64-61. Into a 2-3 zone, our MSUB. Kicked out, Lindo with it. He's on four fouls, playing on the court now. Lindo. Eventually puts up a shot, missed rebound, Shabazz. He was in amongst the trees there, couldn't get a clean look at the bucket. Nearly a steal there with two minutes to go in the second half. Now 150, Wiggins all the way, Wiggins is fouled. Couple bodies on the ground, including the post, Jonaku, who was under trying to get himself in a good position to possibly make a rebound or a play on that. And I believe it was Lindo that committed the foul and he picks up a knock as well as fouling out of the game. <laughs> they held Carter up. Carter was coming in to replace Lindo. They held Carter up and said, wait until the middle shot of the free throw. That ref, I believe, did not realize that Lindo fouled out, so he immediately had to be subbed off. 64-61. Carrington Wiggins and have two cracks at the free throw line to make it a two possession game. 152 to go here in the second half. First free throw is up and good. It's 65 to 61. Clutch free throw from a guy that was a unanimous preseason all GNAC pick. Unanimous first teamer last year as well. In the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, two free throws. Put MSU Billings up by five, 66-61, 150 to go here in the second half. Still in the 2-3 is MSUB. Patrick with it, looks under Carter. Carter puts it in. Austin Carter. Been the most consistent offensive player for Holy Names. We've seen different spurts from others as Curry took some contact there on a screen, tried to sell it a little bit. No call for a Class B technical flopping there. Definitely saw more of a, a fight for one though there than when Gray went down. We're gonna get Carter and Ajanaku locked up, which means Ajanaku will get to go to the line. They were just playing bully ball down there in the middle of the key. And the foul is called on Carter. And for Carter, that's his fourth foul. He's in foul trouble now. Both him and Ploche on four fouls. First shot from Ajanaku misses. 66-63, this next shot is big. 1.16 to go here in the second half. We're seeing more and more fans kind of file their way in in anticipation of the home team, St. Martin's, getting ready to go in the bows. First, we get the conclusion of this one, and a free throw from Ajanaku makes it a two possession game. 67 63, 115 to go. Ball is inbounded. And running the offense will be Gill. Crucial possession here for Holy Names. Handed off to Curry. Curry looking for options. Kicked out to Patrick. Patrick for three. Rims out, rebound Wiggins. Not in must foul mode yet. Wiggins a couple times up the court nearly lost it. And he will get over half court in time, but only with a couple seconds to spare. Shabazz to Richardson. Richardson out to Ajanaku. Tot, Tot with it, throws into Ajanaku. Ajanaku will be fouled. And a smart, smart play there by Gill, I believe. To realize 
it's a higher percentage shot for Ajanaku if he gets to shoot that ball into the basket than if he gets to go to the free throw line. Ajanaku, I mentioned that last year, a 49% free throw shooter. But he makes the first here to expand the lead to five. Ajanaku three for or four for seven today. Make it five for eight. That free throw is going to be a big component for Ajanaku's season. He's going to get a lot of chances down there. It's a hard time getting across half court. 30 seconds to go in this game. 69 to 63. We're going to get a timeout from Holy Names. 27.1 to go in this contest. Let's give you another reset, kind of catch you up on what's been going on. 69 to 63. Holy Names is trailing MSU Billings. Carrington Wiggins has 16 points. Richardson right behind him with 14. Shabazz has 12. On the other side, Patrick leads the way offensively for Holy Names. Carter right behind him with 12. Curry has 11, but we've seen solid play from a lot of different offensive players. No real consistency in terms of who's going to be that top scorer in the same way that MSU Billings has a guy like Carrington Wiggins who you can call on pretty constantly. It was Holy Names that got this to a two-point game. But since then, MSU Billings has made their free throws, played smart offensively, continue to play solid defensively. And now their lead's up to six. 25 seconds left in the second half. Curry with it. Curry into Patrick. Patrick puts it in. 17 seconds left. Full court press is obviously on here. It's going to be a foul situation. Timeout called. Nearly taken too long to throw that one in was Shabazz. He was looking all over the place. Holy Names did a really good job there of sticking to their men after the basket. 69 to 65 with 17 seconds to go. Holy Names is going to be looking hard at the free throw percentages, likely Ajanaku's 49% from last year. He was the lowest free throw shooter. Uh, if we do see Malik uh, Brickett, or Briquet on the court, he shot 42% last year for MSUB. So uh, another guy to keep an eye on if we do see him out on the court. Those would be probably the two names that are being circled, most notably Ajanaku. We'll see if Ajanaku steps onto the floor. You love his rebounding ability, but with four fouls and a lackluster free throw percentage, despite his uh, five for eight mark from the line today, you still don't want any hack a shack type methods. On the other way, uh, and also Holy Names needs to be aware of the foul trouble. Carter cannot commit a foul. He's at four. Ploche is also at four. So if either of those guys commit a foul, they are out, and we will not see either of them on the court for this defensive shift. Ajanaku is on the floor right now, but right now we're going to see a full press and probably still a trap. Everybody will tell you the best advice is do not foul right away unless you got to. Into the corner, and they're really quick on calling the foul there on number 11, Jake Smith. Shabazz was the one that was fouled, so he's going to get a shoot two at the line. Double bonus. We've been in double bonus for a while. Again, please stick around for game two of today's doubleheader. St. Martin's will take on number 13 ranked Cal State San Marcos. It's going to be a really exciting game, too. This game one has also been uh, plenty fun for us here. A 20-point lead from MSU Billings cut down to two, but Billings looking like they have just enough gas in the tank to get themselves over the uh, finish line here and win their first game of 2022. Or the 22-23 season, I should say. Shabazz's second free throw is missed. Curry coming down. Need to huck up something pretty quick here. Gray with it. Gray. Goes all the way, and it's taken away, and it will stay with Holy Name. 7.1 on the clock. We're getting close to miracle needed for Holy Names 
to find a way to win this and for Dave Covell to start his career 1-0 and as a Holy Names coach. Taking the out-of-bounds will be Lawrence Smith. Uh, a couple bodies hit the floor. Lawrence Smith for three, partially blocked. Rebound will go out of bounds, and it will, I think, stay, at least from what I saw, stay with Holy Names, and it will. 1.8 left, and Holy Names, the comeback, is going to fall just short. Patrick for three. It falls short, and so do the Hawks. A 70-65 to 65 final score in this game. Real quick, I'll kind of wrap it up before ending this stream and we'll take you, or we'll invite you to join us on a different stream, same YouTube channel to see that game too between Cal State San Marcos and St. Martins. But real quick, the leading scorer for the victorious MSUB Yellow Jackets, 16 from Carrington Wiggins. Richardson had five, 13 from Shabazz. The leading rebounder was Shabazz with seven, right behind was Wiggins with six. Richardson also involved of the rebounding hunt, he had five. On the other side, Holy Names, definitely a lot of positives to take away from Dave Covell's Holy Names coaching debut. 16 points for Patrick, Carter added 12, Curry added 11, he was a big part of that spurt that got it within two with uh, an and one, with two and ones and a three pointer. Uh, the rebounder, that did the best for Holy Names. Six rebounds from Lindo, which is impressive considering it's not necessarily a post. Plays a little post, but much more of a guard from what we saw from him today. And also adding four rebounds was Carter and Smith. Not much to say in terms of the difference between these two teams. Just MSUB found a way to make the plays when needed, make the free throws when needed, the fouls and the 33 free throws attempted compared to just the 13 uh, was a big factor for MSU Billings. Again, if you're interested in seeing more basketball, just click this YouTube channel, see the next stream starting up in probably about 15 minutes or so between number 13, Cal State San Marcos, and the defending GNAC regular season champions, St. Martin's. If you're not joining us for the second game, then we'll likely see you tomorrow for one of the two men's basketball games, either MSU Billings versus Cal State San Marcos at 10 a.m. or the 7.30 Pacific time tip-off between Holy Names and St. Martin's. My name is Scott Gladstone. Thank you again, thanks again to Sidney Henderson, our producer, as well as Zane Leposki, our cameraman. We'll see you for game two coming up on the separate stream. Thank you and stay safe out there.